and we're going to give you a little update on a giant meeting we're having as this motorcycle rider goes by. Uh, we're having a giant meeting on Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. That's California time. So, for example, if you're on the East Coast, that'll be 10 o'clock at night, your time. And uh, if you're in the middle of the United States or on the West Coast, it'd be a different time. Now, that's 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And what we're going to be doing is, listen closely, what you're going to do at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, you're going to go right below this video. Now, look below. You see right there where it says HTTP and then it goes through the www.shockonow.net site. You see that? You're going to be going there, and when you go there, you're going to see a little round circle that says enter chat room. You'll see a little round circle that says enter chat room, and you're going to enter the chat room. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, all watching a giant debate that was video recorded live between uh, atheist Christopher Hitchens where he loses the debate horribly and the brilliant genius Christian theist Dr. William Lane Craig who won the debate brilliantly. So uh, we're going to be doing that. That's at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time this Wednesday. Don't forget to go right below there and test to see if you get in the chat room. You don't need to download anything. You basically, it's browser based. You do have to have speakers on though. And we're gonna show you the bankrupt worldview of atheism at seven o'clock p.m. Pacific time, Wednesday. You got that? Okay, cool. Now, I recently debated not one, but two more atheists and both of them lost. One of them, didn't even really bring up any arguments for his side and the other one brought up some pathetic arguments now we love the atheists don't get me wrong we want them to be saved and this is why we do these debates but let's talk to you about the debates that we have with the atheists and remember write that down on your calendar Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time <clears throat> now we recently have won 43 debates in a row versus the fictitious worldview of atheism. Now we just won two more debates, so that brings it up to 44 wins. And then I had another debate with an atheist and he lost, that's 45 wins. So he went from 43 to 44 wins and now 45 wins. So let's go through <laughs> some of the, I mean, I want to say this as nice as possible, but the, the things that these atheists bring up are absolutely pathetic, as you'll see. I put some little post-it notes here so you can, I wrote down some things that they, that they said. Okay, basically let's go through what I said first. Hold on, I've got to itch my nose. We're going to go through what I said first, and by the way, if you'd like to hear some of these debates archived, click right below here at shockonow.net and go to podcast. You'll see it there at the top of the page. Podcast. And you can even download these debates in MP3 audio. I got some debates from some of the top people, even some of me on my radio show. Shock Radio. Okay, here's what I went through. And by the way, don't you love these Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai Sonatas? Those are very nice cars. I test drove one of those. They're very nice. Four-cylinder. They get very good gas mileage. They have a camera inside. When you're backing up, it shows what's behind you and stuff. Okay, I just oiled my chain on this motorcycle, and it seems like it's gliding. I'm not even, I'm barely giving it throttle. It's like coasting. Um, I went through these uh, five arguments, okay? So I'm going to go through what I went through, and then we'll go through what they... They didn't even say anything, really, on, on atheism. There was a guy uh, also in the room, 
uh, who recently has been coming in there he's an atheist but he he is he he is not biased to the truth he's starting to come around uh and his name is cameron dr cameron he's a dentist or something and he admitted that i won the debate he said the other atheist didn't bring up any arguments at all the other atheist agreed also so we're going to talk to you about that okay a very nice convertible corvette i went through these five arguments number one the cosmological argument whatever begins to exist has a cause the universe began to exist therefore the universe has a cause the cause because you can't have an infinite regress the cause must be uncaused everyone agrees with that you can't have an infinite regress so the cause of the universe since the universe is uh, not infinite it's finite must be uncaused and because it created time, you know, time didn't even exist prior to this quote-unquote Big Bang. That's what atheists agree with too. Stephen Hawking agrees with it. Because it created time, it must be timeless. And this is what everyone means by God. And it's interesting that if you look at the first page of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God. He's already there. He's timeless. He's a spirit. He's spiritual. Jesus said, that God is spirit must be worshipped as such. Spirit is not matter, okay, like the universe. Okay, so I go through the cosmological argument saying how it can't be a natural cause because matter, time, energy, even space itself didn't even exist yet. It was not pre-existing. The majority of scientists around the world do agree that the universe had a beginning. I go to go through the um, choices. It's either natural or a supernatural cause. It can't be natural. There were no natural ingredients. There were no natural material. It had to be supernatural. He couldn't debunk that, the atheist. Okay, so then I go to the fine-tuned argument. There's about 50 constants that need to be fine-tuned in the universe. If the universe is to, to sustain life on this planet, both atheists didn't even touch that. They they were confused by that. They were uneducated on the teleological argument. They were confused. Um, we talked about the fine-tuned constants, which, which clearly there's only three reasons why the universe would have those fine-tuned constants. It's either dumb luck or chance, physical necessity, like something in natural law, or design. We then showed how it's not dumb luck or chance, and there's nothing in physical necessity or natural law that would cause the constants to be that way. In fact, some of them are just have these conditions put in arbitrary as uh, they're arbitrary right at, right at the beginning of the creation of the universe since the fine-tuned universe is plausibly not due to dumb luck or chance or physical necessity it therefore follows logically and inescapably that it is therefore due to design they could not debunk that couldn't debunk it I then talked about objective moral values how there are some things that are always wrong rape is always wrong it's always wrong. Um, let's go this way, so I don't have to get on the other freeway. I can give it a little bit more throttle here. I got the atheist to agree with me that there are objective values, things that are always wrong. Then, if, then this proves objective values in the world. Well, where do these objective values come from? They couldn't prove that it came from evolution. If there are objective values, J.L. Mackey, for example, he was an atheist, he said if there are objective values in the world, it does make the existence of God uh, more probable than if there were not objective values. I got both of the atheists to concede there are objective values. Then we went through the historicity of Jesus Christ. They were very unknowledgeable about Jesus Christ. I could tell both of them have never researched the historical person of Jesus Christ, I'll tell you why in a moment what they said, was just sheer ignorance. I don't mean to be disrespectful to my atheist friends, but what they said was sheer ignorance. We went on uh, on personal experience. Christians experienced God in their lives. 
unless we have a defeater, something that says we're just absolutely delusional, unless we have something that says this, something that shows us that, then the Christian is rationally justifiable to believe that God exists. We have personal experience. What's these five different arguments? Now, then they got up to bat and I said, they were supposed to talk about when I said, what good reasons are there to believe that God doesn't exist? What good reasons are there to believe that God doesn't exist? They had nothing at all. Nothing. It was absolutely pathetic. One of the guys got up and, you know, you're supposed to speak for up to 20 minutes. I take all my 20 minutes because I have a lot of proof and evidence of God's existence. But one of the guys got up, he spoke for like seven minutes. And it was just gibberish. I mean, it was sad. I mean, you feel sorry for how deluded these atheists can be. One of the guys said, well, if the universe is finite, then God can't be eternal. Huh? What does God have to do with the universe? He's not matter. He's the creator of the universe. So when I said, give me some arguments for that, he had again nothing. See, my atheist friends, you don't just claim something. You have to have arguments for it. It's not just like you're a 12-year-old child in school saying, says who? <laughs> you have to have arguments, my buckaroos. Let's give it some good rattle here. Okay, what else did he say? Oh! One of the other atheists said that Jesus never existed. Now, there's a lot of kooks out there. There's a um, there's a fringe group called the Jesus Seminars, and these guys are absolutely kooks. But there's different levels of kookiness. The most absolute level of kookiness is someone that says Jesus never existed. This is someone that just does not know history and is not educated and they're ignorant on the fact. Even the Jesus seminar, as kooky as they are and as far away from rational evidence as they are, at least they also admit, look, pit bulls sold out over here at the Indian Casino. At least they admit that Jesus Christ existed. Even the coop fringe of the Jesus Seminar myth Jesus Christ existed. Let's see what else we got here. I have like some little notes here. Um, oh! This was epic. This was absolutely epic. The atheists in the room were like, well, you know, Shock already won this one because you guys aren't giving any arguments. They're just like saying stuff like, well, I don't believe God exists. You can't win a debate just by saying that. Remember, guys, your, your opinion means nothing. You have to have plausible deductive argumentation, which I had, they didn't have. So the, this other guy said, well, I don't have to give arguments for my atheism. Well, then you don't have to win the debate then. You just lie. <laughs> so anyways, it was... Both of these debates were, on the atheist side, absolutely pathetic. It was absolutely pathetic. Guys, that makes now 45 debates we've won in a row. Christian theism is one versus atheism. Uh, in a row, 45. We just won 44, 44, and now 45 in a row. Now listen. Wednesday, remember Wednesday, this Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, go right here below this video or you'll see the annotation, www.shockonnow.net. You're going to see a little round circle there that says enter chat room. Click that button, go in there, you're going to see tons of people in there. We're going to be watching Christopher Hitchens lose in debate. You're going to see Christopher Hitchens sweat. You're going to see him squirm. You're going to see him evade. You're going to see him lose a debate like every single atheist has done coming to our chat room. 45 debates. 